Today, Walk With History is on location from Williamsburg, Virginia. Hi, I'm Jen of Walk With History and the Talk With History podcast. And so today, I'm just gonna give you a little overview of Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia. We'll have many videos coming from this location, including colonial dress, colonial talk, the different players that actually lived here. But today it's just an overview if you want to come and visit. So we're starting at the visitor center. The visitor center is off of Colonial Williamsburg. If you park here, you're either going to have to take a tram or you're going to walk. If you want to be close to Colonial Williamsburg, do not park at the visitor center. You want to park closer to the museums and downtown Williamsburg, because again, this is away from Colonial Williamsburg. It says here 173 acres. It's really 300 acres, but this is a historian's Disneyland. It is a living museum. It's where you can walk and talk to people in colonial clothes. There's colonial locations, tons of tours, tons of walking exhibits and things along that nature where you can relive what it was like in the 1700s here in Colonial Williamsburg. Williamsburg was the capital of Virginia until Thomas Jefferson decided to move it to Richmond for more protection and it's named after King William III of England. So this is a really good depiction of the visitor center area. Like I said, you're not close to Colonial Williamsburg here. Thank you, sweetheart, flower for my daughter. If you park here at the visitor center, you're gonna to have to take a bus or walk to Colonial Williamsburg because you're not close to Colonial Williamsburg here. So most people who park here probably don't realize that because they come into the visitor center. But if you want to be close to Colonial Williamsburg, you park in the city. You park by the museums and you park by William and Mary. But this is a good location for gift shops. Some of the best gift shops are here. It's a good location for information. And if you want to buy your passes, usually you have to buy them here. So this is a good location for all of that. This is a good place if you're gonna take a walk into Colonial Williamsburg. And like the tram is always going as well. Good parking locations here. This is a great first stop. Lots of information here as well. So the very first time we visited Colonial Williamsburg, this is where we came to, and then we actually walked onto the whole location. So we realize that it's actually easier to park closer to the location so that's what we're going to do today but i wanted to start here at the williams at the visitor center because most people will start here if you like our walk with history t-shirts or talk with history t-shirts or if you're liking any of the stickers everything is available on walkwithhistorygiftshop.com look at the leaves changing it's beautiful to see this in colonial williamsburg so we parked at the Rockefeller Folk Art Museum. And that is a great place to park. You have lots of parking here and you're very close to Colonial Williamsburg here. Yes, did I say Rockefeller? I did say Rockefeller. Colonial Williamsburg is here today because of John D. Rockefeller Jr. He stepped in and donated a ton of money in the 1930s that rebuilt all of Colonial Williamsburg. So when you think of Rockefeller and you think of money, you need to think of Colonial Williamsburg because it was his vision with some other people as well, but his money that financed building Colonial Williamsburg to what it is today. So we parked down at the Folk Art Museum parking, and then we're able to walk down the street and you are right into the thick of Colonial Williamsburg. It makes it very easy to access. Duke of Gloucester, that is one of the main roads here. So when you see that on addresses and things like that, that is one of the main roads here in Colonial Williamsburg. There'll be lots of apps and maps you can look at and locations, but one of the things you want to look for is that flag. They'll have the colonial flag, which looks like a British flag in the corner and red and white stripes. Anytime you see that flag outside of a building, that means it's open for tours, open for people to talk about, open for you to go in and explore. There's a man coming out in colonial dress. You're able to to engage with them and talk with them. So you're looking for those flags outside of structures as you walk through Colonial Williamsburg. And that'll let you know if a place is able to be accessed and walk inside. So most houses here in Williamsburg will be marked with their historic significance who lived there, what they did. So you can just walk down the street and most locations are gonna have who built this house, who lived here. This is 1804. Um, it was a retail store in the 1770s. 
It has a name, Cole House Original Building. So that's also going to be like, it's not a rebuild, it's an original building. So you're going to see these in Colonial Williamsburg, which is great because no matter where you walk, they're going to have some kind of information for the structures you're looking at. If you don't get your tickets at the Visitor Center, this is the location to get your tickets here at Colonial Williamsburg. This is the location to get tickets for haunted tours or Christmas tours or things along that nature. Again, if you don't get your stuff at the Visitor Center, this is the place to get it here in Colonial Williamsburg. Most of these places you cannot go inside without a ticket. You can buy a day pass. You can buy a six month pass. I bought, we had the yearly pass. That doesn't get you free tickets to some of the events, but it gets you like a discount. So just be aware, if you wanna go in the buildings, unless it's like a gift shop, you have to have a ticket. This is like the heart of Colonial Williamsburg. You're gonna have the Governor's Palace right across the Palace Green, and that is the name of the street right here. And then you're gonna have the church, the parish, right here. This is where Thomas Jefferson went to church. And then down the other main street, all the way at the end of the street is the, the Capitol building. So this is like the main area of Colonial Williamsburg. This is where if you get a carriage ride, you're gonna ride up and down the street. Uh, carriage rides also have to be purchased in advance. They fill up very quickly and you'll get a carriage ride down the street in front of the uh, governor's palace. But yeah, this is a great location. So we're going to do some of the houses here. A lot of the signers of the Declaration of Independence live around here. And you have six presidents that actually went to school at William and Mary, which is the college that is over on the other side of this. But look at how many people are here. It's a, like I said, this is a historian's Disneyland. This is like, if you want to be immersed in a living museum and see houses and talk to people who are trying to be authentic to the time, this is the place to come. It's one of the best places to stay would probably be the Colonial Williamsburg Inn since it's pretty much on location and a lot of their tickets are going to include some of the events here as well. Welcome to the former homes of Patrick Henry and Thomas Jefferson. This is the Governor's Palace of Colonial Williamsburg. Like and subscribe to Walk With History to learn more. So we are walking through the Governor's Palace, and like I said, you will meet people who are dressed in colonial garb. By what she's wearing, you can tell what class of woman she is. So she looks like she's an upper class woman uh, working in the house. She's wearing her bonnet on top, and she's wearing her day dress and she has her stockings. Her shoes are made of leather, which lets you believe she might not be as high upper class. Most women who are high upper class, are women, their shoes would be made of cloth. Of course, this is not authentic, but that's kind of what the premise is if you're looking for colonial dress. So this is the back of the governor's palace. If you come to Colonial Williamsburg, I recommend if you can be outside, stay outside. Your walkways will look like it's gravel. It's not gravel. It's actually shells. It's actually oyster shells because they were in such abundance here. You're so close to the water and it was such a big part of colonial diet that they would go through so many oyster shells and they would use them then, um, break them up and use them as gravel on walkways and paths. And that's what you see here. They're all oyster shells on the pathways. But we're gonna go to the maze because the maze behind the governor's palace is, is a big draw for tourists and my children love it, so we're going there. But this is a nice, beautiful tree archway walkthrough that they have here behind the governor's palace. So can you imagine Thomas Jefferson might have walked out here when he was pondering what to write or what to say or how to approach a subject with a dignitary. He might have walked out here 
thinking of how to handle a big situation of America. So if you come here to Colonial Williamsburg, you are actually walking in the footsteps of some of the founding fathers and the thought leaders of the young country of America. with Colonial Williamsburg, you can walk down the Duke of Gloucester Street. All the way at the end of this street is the Capitol building. So if you walk all the way down to the other end, you get to downtown Williamsburg, which has great eateries, awesome candy shop. They have a Scottish store. They have tons of gift shops. William and Mary is along the street down here. So it's just a really great place to end your day, have a good time, have a good meal some top-notch restaurants. They have live music out here. It really is a lot of fun. Today, they actually had a farmer's market here. And at Christmas time, they put up an ice rink. So again, this is a historian's playground. If you love a living museum, if you love an area that you can come and just be immersed in American history, Colonial Williamsburg is for you. On to my next Walk of History.